Welcome to Reality After Show, coverage of The Challenge, Season 40, Episode 6. I'm your host, Dan Monchal, joined, as always, Polly Calafiore. And Polly, tonight, I just hope that you're doing better than uh, Derek and the rest of Era 1. Oh my god, dude. I mean, I would like apologies from the fandom, right? Like, I would like apologies from the controversial takes here. I mean, are we watching the same show here? Like, do we not think that they would all be better suited for All-Stars? With the exception of maybe Rachel. Rachel and Ra- CT. Rachel, is, Rachel is the only one that seems to have... And I'm not... Listen, I'm not knocking... Right? Derek's a tough motherfucker, dude. It looks like he, you know, he, he's an animal. I'm not questioning their heart and their gumption here. What I'm questioning is their ability to play this game still without like with with also being able to walk later in life and it seems like rachel is the only one that like really has her her shit together you know it it's just like everyone it it's um man it's it's tough to watch because like we've all watched them in their prime right Mm -hmm. so we all know what they're capable of but i think now it's time to just admit that they just don't have it anymore. You know and, what I mean? Like with with like there's few exceptions, right? But like they their only play at this point coming into these games is let me just coast in the background and hope that I make a final and hope that like my wisdom in finals allows me to win. But once again, the only people who can say that are like Johnny and CT. At this point, Air One's essentially just that meme to like, stop it, stop hitting them, they're already dead. Because that's them. Because with this format, they're gonna come in last every time. I don't see any situation where they don't, and it's either, I can't tell if we're gonna wait until we just kill them off before we go to the next phase of the game, or it needs to happen right away because Tina, Darrell, Derek, I think Rachel's the only one that has staying power halfway through this game. So let's I just, think we're either seeing yeah. them go in the next three or four weeks or let's see some type of shakeup because this is getting old just seeing them getting their ass kicked episode after episode. Dude, let's just call it what it is. I mean, good thing that there's four errors because if it wasn't old school versus new school, old school would get absolutely demolished just by having error one on their team Mm -hmm. right like at this point it would almost be mercy for tj to stop it and be like all right yeah like we're gonna merge (laughs) we're gonna merge some teams here like we gotta do something because the realistically let's look at it they're down to their final two girls their final two guys and one of their guys i'm pretty sure he just blew out his knee which, I mean, I, I doubt we're going to touch on it later. But at that point, why is Darrell the target going into next week? Like, Derek, it doesn't look like has an injury that he can walk off. Like, at that oh, point, dude. you just got to say, Darrell, I appreciate what you're doing. <sighs> I'm the target. You got you to gotta go for mercy at that point. I, th- I think what they might be thinking is maybe give Darrell. Give him time to rest. Maybe, maybe, yeah, give him time to rest and maybe g- let Darrell, like, probably pull out, like, an elimination win, possibly. Um, to try and weaken the other teams. I mean, there's listen, there's a lot to cover on this episode. Uh, this is probably one of the worst managed strategic episodes I've ever seen. So, um, it, in my life, I mean, like, Era 4, congratulations on the win. I guess if you want to call it a win, like, because now dailies mean that you could come in third place. But somehow win if you were just didn't pop your balloons. Someone still needs to explain the balloon thing to me because I, I, I understand I them I playing the a portion. Thing, but, I'm, but I'm, you know, I'm kind of over the dailies where it's like, you know, there should be a clear cut first, second, and third, and fourth place. And it's like for era four to basically come in third because they had more balloons like i get it that was the game but it's like i don't know like i i I, i'm getting i'm getting a little lost here 
Well, like, how bad would it have been if Arrow won with Derek on one leg and they have four people going out somehow pop none of their balloons and they win? Like, that really would be a disgusting taste in your mouth. And this wasn't much better, but we're heading down that path. Yeah, man. Like, I, like dude, I, I keep bringing up War of the Worlds 1 and War of the Worlds 2 just because I feel like they were some of the most well put together challenge seasons and unfortunately because bears a trash human we don't really have access to watch them as much as we would like to watch them and really break down what made them amazing every single daily it was cut and dry that the top three best people were going to be make up who made the decisions right and it was clear cut on war of the worlds too which team was going to win or not. It was a very straight to the point daily. Every single daily on War of the Worlds 1 and War of the Worlds 2. It was straight to the point. Here's the winners. Here's the losers. Right? It, it starts to get annoying to me. Because like if a team's not good, they shouldn't be able to pull out a win. You yeah. know what I mean? And like, listen, I'm glad that Era 4 won. Because like, represent. I'm happy that Era 4 won. Because I would like Era 4 to win every single daily this season because they should. Mm -hmm. Like, they absolutely should win every single daily this season. But, once again, as we saw in this episode, they just don't have what it takes to make the decisions. And the team uh, lacks leadership and they're weak. They're weak. They're, they're, we they're all weak mentally. Um, and, and it blows my mind. And Michelle, you know, how's that fucking first choice of elimination matchup treating you now? Right? Like I told you that when it came time to make decisions, you were going to want somebody that was going to make decisions that were best for the team. Mm -hmm. The team. Not what's best for all of the friends that I would like to protect in the game, which I had a lot of them. But if I was looking at this strategically... There was only really one option. And how do you feel, Michelle, that you essentially were steered away from making the right decision? Uh, you know, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll give myself my own, you know, fault there a little bit, but I wasn't the one with the power, right? <clears throat> from a strategic standpoint, the decision should have always been Josh on that first elimination, regardless of who wanted who, if we were thinking about what was going to be best for the team and who was going to be best fitted to make the decisions that we all knew people on Era 4 weren't going to make, right? And second option being Kylan. It's like, you're going to strong arm me to put in my number one girl. I'm going to strong arm you to put in your number one guy. Um, and I think she's seeing that now. And I think a lot of people are seeing it in, in, in how it's going. And, you know, listen, it is what it is. You know, the Vacation Alliance is literally flaunting it in everybody's faces that, like, this is our game. All of you will do what we say. And, um, you know, Johnny and Laurel, the two biggest threats in the game outside of Jordan, um, are, are almost like offered up on a silver platter here like offered up on a silver platter and they just somehow evade it. I completely understand everything you said where you're coming from. For me watching the episode, you know, obviously solely as a viewer, not as someone who's been in the house, a contestant, anything like that. I thought what we saw are from two people was the perfect episode that if you wanted to sum up their challenge career to someone who has never seen the show before, we got that perfect example for two people there. The first one is Josh. Simply, you get it from the beginning, from his talk with Tori of, oh, I'm not sure where to be with where I am with bananas, gets 100% strong armed to react on nothing but solely an emotional decision, ends up doing that despite not best for his game, not best for his allies game, his errors game, really anyone in the house's game other than Johnny and Laurel 
and he does it anyway because he just can't help himself. And at the end of the day, he's, he wants to be liked more than he wants to win. Dude, that's that's his career in a nutshell. Like when your when your goals don't align with your actions, you got to look in the mirror. So you could sit here all you want and be like, I want to make my first final. I want to have a chance to win. But I'm sorry, bro. But uh, when you have decisions on the line that winners make, you make those choices. And, you know, are you going to play to win or are you going to play for other people to win? And he always is playing for other people to win because he would much rather be liked when let's call it what it is, they're all going to forgive each other anyway. If you're on the vacation alliance, you're all going to forgive each other anyway coming into next season because you don't want to, to not make it to the halfway point, right? But it's ultimately, it's, it's becoming boring to watch. It does make it just laughable at this point of, what was that, episode two, episode three, where Josh gets enraged with Tori and you think, oh no, is this a thing? And... In real time, what, we're a week later and it's just, well, clearly it's what's best for the four of us. And it's just, they were never upset with each other. It was either because Josh was upset because at that point his manhood was pretty much attacked or he was just letting out some drunken emotions. But that was never going to be a carryover to have lasting effects on the season. Dude, I think his manhood was more attacked by not making the decision that he needed to make. Right, and he tried to, I mean, but listen, he's got a good social game, so he tried to put it off on completely being Jenny there. And, you know, once again, Jenny is sitting here being like, oh, I don't understand, like, the team this, the team that. Hey, Jenny, you know, you wanted me going against your boy. We were the odd numbers out on that team, all of us. You know what I mean? Like, they were able to come to you and talk numbers. Josh was able to come to you and be like, Oh, here's what the numbers are. You know, we really got to stop that up. And now that they have control of the team, they quickly realize, oh, wait, I, I'm i on the outs here. Michelle doesn't want to nominate herself to be this. I'll just be the rotating target. Yeah. That's what happens when you don't play with people who would actually voice their opinion. And I'm, and I'm kind of sick of it. Only being in the confessionals. Like, what are you doing, dude? Like ever and like every everything, like everything goes to the confessionals, right? Mm -hmm. Like Olivia sitting there being like, "Nope, Johnny, one hundred percent did say that." Well, where were you? Where were you? You yeah, saved that you for your right confessional. There. Like you could have easily, easily, as as bananas is sitting there and we're watching him in real time, like how he lies in real time, of like, oh, like people convolute what I say. It's like, no, they don't. But everybody's too afraid to call it out and be like, no, you did this, dude. Like, this is, this is Banana's playbook. Like, bro, he did the same thing to me and Kara from Final Reckoning to War of the Worlds 1 to War of the Worlds 2. The same shit. Using her for game. Using her for clout. Using her for this. This is Johnny's MO when it comes to people in relationships. So because I, I relationships are a threat in the game to someone like Johnny. I want to get to a bigger point, but because you brought it up right there, did it make you feel better or worse that Johnny was using that same playbook that you saw, you know, one of the last times you were in the house with you and Gara? I mean, do they have the challenge fans woken up? Like, I feel like, I feel like I should just be getting all the apologies <laughs> at this point from the challenge fandom. Like, just give me all the apologies. Like, I, like have a Pauly was right about everything party at this point, because it's like, I see the game for what it is. I see people for what they are, and I see their motives behind what they do just for what it is. Um, and it's strictly from a game standpoint, right? But there's ways of doing things from a game standpoint, you know, that, I mean, Devin said it per perfectly. He's like, dude, I'm not playing that kind of game. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not playing a dirty game. Like, this is kind of a dirty move that, like, you're coming to the girl that I'm, like, hooking up with, and you're trying to play on her insecurities. So this leads back to, it was my other point of this episode summed up two people's games perfectly of how they play it. The first one was Josh, the other one was Bananas, because this was a vintage Bananas episode of, he knows he's the target, he knows everyone should be putting him on the block, so what does he do? He decides to stir the pot, 
you know, just throw shit at the wall, see what will ever stick. And then when someone comes back and asks him about that, blatantly lies, saying that isn't what happened. I, you know, essentially just gaslighting Michelle into thinking that this was all in her head. That isn't what he actually said to her. Like, that's something that the two of you need to work out. And then at the end of the day, somehow walks away scot-free without being targeted. It's it's a master it's a master class on Banana's game. He it is it is so impressive, but I think what people need to realize is Johnny is far superior um, from a mental standpoint than anybody else in the game, and the only way you can mentally go toe to toe with him is if you just know his moves and you just call them out. Right, like, I, like he was never really able to bullshit me or like tell me I didn't hear what I heard, or if I did hear something, he was never able to really kind of be like whatever. Like it was as simple as this: final reckoning happens. Him and I were on good terms after final reckoning. Um, you know, t- uh, at a certain point, leading into War of the Worlds one, then it gets back to me that he's leading the charge to target me going into War of the Worlds one. We get into the house. All it took was for somebody to come to me and be like, yeah, him and all of his friends are planning to target you. And I had a conversation with them similar to Devin and was like, yo, man, are you planning on targeting me? He goes, listen, I know people are saying that it's a lie. I knew it wasn't a lie. And I wasn't going to sit there and like let him like BS me. But, you know, I also didn't see him as a threat on War of the Worlds 1. I was like, all right, he's he's partnered with Morgan. Mm -mm. I'm working with Morgan. She's going to protect me, but having him in the game, you know, he's going to try and get people to take his shots for him. And it just so happens that he went out before he had a chance to do it. But it was the same thing going into war of the worlds too. It was like, I knew he was going to target. It was just a matter of when. All right. Now to his credit and to Laurel's credit, they didn't even give me and Carl breathing room. Um, coming into the season. They were like, no, 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 no. We're not making the same mistake we did on War of the Worlds 2. We're not even giving them a life force because it's going to come out to bite us in the ass, right? I genuinely don't think Devin was targeting uh, Bananas at all. This was all Bananas coming up with scenarios in his head that eventually would bite him down the road, which is where he's a great game player. Like, he sees it down the road, right? So... Devin isn't targeting him now. Devin wasn't probably going to target him for like a week or two. But as it got closer to the final, Bananas was looking at his options being like, who do I have a better shot at not taking a shot at me? That's Michelle. Devin will take the shot at me. Devin will use Michelle to take a shot at me. I need to break this up. And Mm. it's just smart gameplay on his end. Now, do I agree with the methods on how he did it? No, I, I don't. Because... I witnessed that happen firsthand and like, I don't think that that's the right way uh, to do it. Right. And he, and he feeds on the insecurities of uh, some of these women, right? Like Kara was a very insecure uh, girl at one point, very susceptible to that kind of stuff. Went through the same kind of playbook of other guys on the show, treating her a certain way, using her, all of this shit. So that I come in and I'm not using her. But I'm a threat because I'm not buddy-buddy. First thing he does is try to work on that weak piece to try and feed the seeds of doubt. Um, And you see doing the same thing with Michelle because Michelle, like we've seen this season, she she has very similar qualities to uh, Kara when Kara was starting out. All right, which is why Laurel honed in on her, which is why Johnny's honing in on her, right? Dude, these people, like, they they operate in the same way. Like, they know how to profile people, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, it's not by mistake that wanted to fit a seat of doubt in Michelle's head. And, like, I was almost pissed at Michelle with the way that she fucking handled it. Where it was like, you go to Devin, you feed this information to him, and, and he's rightfully so upset. And you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't tell you information. It's like, you're fucking hooking up with this person. Of course you should. Tell him this information, Michelle. Like, what are you? Are you that problematic? Yeah. 
So for me, I think the reason Bananas goes after that is because he's looking at the rest of the Vacation Alliance, which, once again, like, viewers, listeners... Bro, they were, I, saying, they were saying VA. VA. Yeah. Like, bro, I'm, yeah. I'm sick to my stomach. Yeah, like, viewers, listeners, we love you, we appreciate you, but if we see one more comment asking who's in the Vacation Alliance, like, we've laid it out for you, and at this point, the, the, the masks show, are off. Has laid it out for you. But so if you look at for what's left right now, that core four being Josh, Casey, Tori, Devin. And then, of course, you know, there's Jordan and others by association that are in it. I think the reason he's going after Devin is simply because Devin's the only one that really will be smart enough and have the balls to go after him. He knows if Devin isn't there, Tori won't take a shot at him. Josh, he just completely manhandled emotionally. Won't take oh, a shot God, at him. Dude. And by and he literally said it. Like, I, I don't know if I'm Josh, how I could watch that episode and be like, wow. Like, he yeah. literally says, yeah, I just built this mountain of guilt on Josh and he caved. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, if you're not embarrassed by having the challenge make a drawing of you as, like, the court gesture, jester, I don't know what's going to wake you up. Like, it's... the challenge is literally editing you like a joke. Mm-hmm. It's end to go back. I mean, you mentioned that this is right out of his playbook. He did it, you know, with you and Kara. But this goes back. He's been doing this for almost 20 years. He used to do this all the time with if Wes was hooking up with someone, if CT was hooking up with someone, with CT was a little, more, a little bit more volatile. And the funny thing about it is if you go back to the very first podcast that we ever did when we were talking about Mount Rushmore's and that's where – you know, conversations of Kenny came up and it was, did Johnny put on his Kenny suit? This is something that Johnny got out of the Kenny playbook because he did, was the first one that did this to Wes back in Fresh yes. Meat 2. So this is something that has been around from that alliance and Johnny for 20 years. And I don't understand how people fall for it time in and time again. And as much as it, it can be frustrating, infuriating... At some point, I do have to somewhat tip my cap to the guy for the fact that everyone knows it's coming, and somehow he no, does it again with no repercussion. You, you, you have to tip your hat. Like, at this point, you have to tip your hat, right? Either the people playing with him are that stupid, or he's just that good, right? Like, you got it. You have to tip your hat uh, to him because, like, what, what are you going to do, right? Like, I, I'm pretty sure I was, like, the most vocal about this antic when it was happening in real time and, you know, wind the clocks forward four or five years and it's the same antic again. And he's literally describing why he does it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's the crazy thing about it was you mentioned that of, he laid it right out for Josh in confessional of what he did to essentially strong arm him. And he does that with all of his moves because he is good at TV. He knows it has to be explained somewhere. And so every time that he strong arms someone or use any dirty trick or tactic, he has always then owned it to the camera in confessional. And the fact that people keep falling for it, it's, I don't understand how you watch this episode. If you're a Josh, if you're a Michelle and not just go, I got got. And feel like an idiot. In they won't, once again, because they're weak mentally. Like any any strong person mentally that has any kind of self worth is gonna look at that episode and be like, Okay, you got me this time, it's not gonna happen again, but it will happen again because they're weak mentally. Yeah. You it's, know what I mean? At this point it's especially with someone like jo like Michelle, I have a little bit more faith in that at some point she potentially could develop some type of backbone and has a chance. I think I don't. That's fair. I think there's <laughs> a path where she could. I, I'm saying I wouldn't be surprised if she became a champ at some point. Not you oh, know yeah, just no, because of I how good she is with that. As far as a backbone, but, don't think so. The backbone, that's fine. But yeah. whereas you're with Josh, you've been doing this for how long? You keep falling for the same mistakes every single time. This is just who he is. He's never going to develop that backbone. I think he has zero shot at ever winning the game. For as much as there are people out there that hate Josh, I get why you hate Josh, because tonight would be a great 
episode of showing why you may like him. But he also gives you a lot of moments to show why he's good for the show. It's just like he's that athlete with potential that can never put all the pieces together. And I don't think ever will. Yeah, athlete being of being very loosely used there. Yeah, I, I, could, but it's quotes. but it's like, but it's like, man, he he has the cognitive social awareness to know what can win games because he's one big brother. It's just mind blowing to me that he hasn't figured out what it takes to put himself in a position to win the challenge when he's played this way more times. Yeah. I mean, like, what, he's on six, seven, eight, I don't know, something in that realm of he, season. He's at something in the way too many realm. He's getting realm. close to 10. Yeah, he's getting close to 10, and it's like he's almost, in a way, turning into another Leroy for Johnny. Where it's like by the time he finally wakes up and realizes like he needs to do this for himself, um, it, it's going to be too late. I see. I, I agree with Johnny, but it feels like he's the Leroy for Tori. Of all people. I think he's the Leroy for a lot of people. I think Casey nailed it on the head where she said that he has too many IOUs that he's trying to, you know, make make happen. And it's like, dude, if you come into every season with a bunch of IOUs, whose game are you playing? Once again, it's just nice to get a reminder that Casey is in fact on the season because if you're not paying attention, you could miss her. <laughs> Listen, I'm glad she had some words to say. I think it's the uh, first episode. time in two episodes that she said anything. It, yeah, and and you know, hey, it was a little, you know, like it was a little bit spicy for Casey's realm of spiciness, right? She was a little spicy, like oh, like she was calling out Jenny, like all you talk about is food, pets, and working out. And you know, I've, I've never seen Casey like get a little spicy with somebody in a confessional before, but she did. Hey, if maybe that's just the baby step with her, you know. So let's get spicy in the confessionals. We get you're probably never going to do it in the game, but let's do something to remember that you're there with a good confessional, at least every other episode. Thing is, with how competitive Casey is, I'm shocked that she's not more come and get it because she can back it. Mm -hmm. And she has the intimidation factor. You know what I mean? It's, it, it's, it's all just, it's, it's mind blowing to me. Like, you know, going through the whole episode of like, okay, the daily ends up the way that it does. The decisions come down to the way it does. And now it's like, all right, Josh, now you set yourself up going into another season where you just screwed over somebody who never screwed you over, ever. And Corey generally does do well at these games. He's obviously never won. I, you know, him and Leroy neck and neck for most finals without actually ever winning. Yeah. But Corey's always does well, and you know Corey's M.O. if you've, which he was there. He's been on the last few seasons, so this isn't like, you know, watch and be surprised. Yep. Corey isn't the vacation alliance where he has numbers all over the place, especially with the likes of Nelson, you know, not being there. And who knows, looks like he'll probably never be back. Yeah. Corey would be the perfect person to have an IOU for because, you know what, you can always be course, uh, Corey's number one, like, because you know who his number one was last in USA 2? It was Fessy, who you're close with. Like, yeah, that just ties it all in together. Yeah, it. I, I don't know. I, like, my thing is, if you're really looking at it from Josh's standpoint, the whole house, whole house wanted Johnny and Laurel. You went against the whole house at that point. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I just, I just don't understand. Like, do you really think you're that protected by your group of people? Or once again, are all the players playing just a bunch of fucking background characters? You know, cause like when I was in there, background there was characters, a, like when I was in there, when I was having all these conversations with a lot of these people, like they were, they were ready to get the swords out and go. Right. But I was the one that would have had to lead the charge. Right. And that I think speaks to the nature of what the challenge has been for the past four years is a bunch of, yeah, we'll do it. And then the second that their leader in charge is gone, they just fall by the wayside and they have no nuance or courage to do it themselves. It's yeah. There's for as much as 
these are reality TV people. The lack of leaders that's there is really staggering when you break it down and look at it. The lack of people willing to make good TV moments. Yeah, that's a better way to put it. Like, what what are you doing? You know what Uh, I mean? Like, you know Era 1 is going in. You know, now, do I think that Johnny comes away winning that? Probably yes. mm -hmm. Um, Do I think that Laurel comes in probably winning that? Maybe. Rachel's a beast. Laurel's a beast. But that's a matchup that, like, anybody with a brain sees strong woman, strong woman, put them against each other, right? Strong man, strong man, put them against each other. Like Laurel even like laughs about it. She's like, you've got me just coming off of winning and you've got Johnny who's got seven wins and we somehow escape this. Like, when are you going to get that opportunity again and throw them both in? How many of those opportunities given this format are you going to get? And that's the mindset that like people need to be thinking in is like, what, how many opportunities are you going to get? Right? Like anytime I saw an opportunity to take a play at a strong player, I did because you don't get many of those opportunities again. And I always joked around with people being like, yeah, people had opportunities to take shots at me and they never did. And I'm a strong player. That's just them being dumb. You know what I mean? Like they, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it, 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 the, the game needs to get to get back to being a little bit more cutthroat. And I feel like the cutthroatness, um, just kind of left. So I think what you need to do with this platform, Polly, is you really need to get more of your propaganda out there because that's the one thing that I'll give bananas credit for, because the one thing that he's, you know, been crying about for years now is he goes into the house and it's him against the world. And you'd think it was, you know, just him by himself going against all of Persia, like not even his 300. It was just him by himself. And you look at it and it's sure he's been in some bad spots, but he goes into maybe one elimination a season. Yeah. But he does a great job of always throwing out that narrative to everyone of, you know what it's like to be me, dude. Like my back's always against the wall. I have everyone going for me. And I and say that not. with the utmost respect for him to being able to do that over and over again. But the bananas propaganda machine can be uh, a bit out of control. I mean, yeah, to weak minded people. Which is most of the cast as we have established. Yeah, very weak minded people. I mean, but he's also riding that line of like, I'm too old to come after and the whole house is against me, right? So like people that normally would go after him like a Jordan, like a Devin, like a Wes, um, you know, even a me, right? Like I've already said, like I have no interest in going after him because he, you know, he's like, what am I going to do? Keep going after an old man. But if given the opportunity to throw him in and it's clear as day right there, I'm going to sit there and be like, one less person I got to worry about mm-hmm. who will probably make the decision to come after me at some point. Yeah, it's, I mean, I think it's a little bit different if you're, I don't know, you're Jordan, you're an X-Men. Because at this point, I think he's just like, I'll go against anyone in the final because his track record speaks for itself. I don't know who beats him. And the he, fact that he's going to be now up for, you know, a potential target for two times in a row. I bet you he doesn't see an elimination next week. And it's once again showing to the house that if Era 3 doesn't win, how you don't put them in elimination, I'll never understand. Because you won't beat him if he's there. I I just don't understand how the mindset of every team isn't, let's try and weaken every other team so we could win. Yeah. Like, you know, Era 1, once again, we've established that they're dead in the water. But the opportunity to weaken error three to the point where they could potentially lose their two best players, which would significantly shoot their chances of winning, like right down the drain. Like if error three and error four were really thinking with their head straight, they could have looked at it as an opportunity to be like, this is the time to pick these two teams apart. We have to never worry about any of them winning. We'll always win one of our teams. And we'll just never pick our teams to go against the other people. Because, I mean, Era 2 would be significantly affected even if, say, the eliminations went 
and it was 50-50, so you lost one, either Bananas or Laurel. If you lose Laurel, obviously she's a strong competitor. If you lose Bananas, not only is he a good competitor, he's one of the brains behind the whole team. 100%. That they have zero shot at winning a daily if you take one of those two out of it. I, I agree, man. It's just uh, it's it's frustrating as somebody who enjoys playing the game to watch people not play the game and, oh, uh, and, and just fall in line, and it, it, it and it's boring. So I have, you know, speaking of that, obviously we know you're a competitor. So as a competitor, I have a question for you. Yeah. Your Kara, as your do you do the same thing that she does, or do you have a little bit more vengeance in you, and do you actually throw the challenge? No, I throw the fuck out of that challenge. <laughs> like, are you like I am all for. I am all for the moral compass of like, let's be a team, let's be a team. Not in this situation. In this situation, mm -hmm. if I'm Kara, that challenge is getting thrown and I'm making it known. I'm popping balloons on the way back. Go out and just let them free. Just unclip the carabiners and Dude, let the I would pop go. every balloon. As soon as they got hooked, I'd start popping them. I'd be like, I'm going to sit right here and every time that somebody gets close to bringing a balloon that's full of air here, I'm going to run into it and punch it and blow that balloon up. Like, and I'm going to be like, yeah, no, this is, this is the, I'm, I'm drawing my line in the sand because you already drew your line in the sand. You already showed that you would do it. Like she is putting way too much trust in the whole, let's keep the team together thing where if the roles are reversed, Johnny and Laurel are throwing the daily and putting her in. And I also think that I think it makes it that much harder to save Bananas and Laurel if they have that much chaos going in where their own team is going after them. I think if that happens, it becomes a lot easier to say, eh, like, the house is getting Dude, weird it, for the sake of the house. It's, we it's need a, to put them in. It's, it's a mental game, right? If you make people feel like their life or their path to the final is going to be very hard they will lose like they will lose you know what i mean like once again the only person that i really give credit to being able to do it is jordan you know and cara maybe you know what i mean like but once again if you throw those two people into every single elimination are they going to win every single elimination i mean we've seen how much of a toss up every elimination has been so far other than the first elimination night. Yeah. Those were the only cut and dry eliminations. The only ones. It's yeah, I mean if you look at it and you see you know, all right, so if we're just making the swap into elimination and they do throw era 2 in there, I think bananas wins just because Brad's thrown a million miles an hour and is all out of control. But I think Rachel gets Laurel. Yeah, I, I, I do. Th I, I think that Rachel gets Laurel. You know what I mean? And once again, that just weakens the team and it weakens the stronghold on everything. Like Bananas uses Laurel as an intimidation factor, you know, and almost like a shield. You know, uh, Laurel is that's Bananas attack dog. Like, yeah, it's 100 percent. That's just that's just what it is. It, it was it was painful to watch. And I think what made it more painful to watch is like, you knew it was coming. Like Jenny and Josh could talk in their confessionals all they want about it, how hard of a decision it was and everything. It wasn't. Mm -mm. It wasn't. They were, nobody who knows the show ever thought that Johnny and Laura were going in with the outcomes that it had. But now I, I, I'm intrigued to see how this plays out for Era 3 and Era 4, who in my opinion should just run away with all of the remaining dailies, right? Mm -hmm. Era 2 has only won... The one that Jordan threw, the... Yeah, they've only, won, they've only won one. You know what I mean? It's been Era 3 and Era 4 this whole time, and I don't understand how they don't look at that to be like, oh yeah, time to dominate. Fuck everybody else. This is the eras, man. Like, you're trying to represent for your era. And you're giving other eras the opportunity to outlast you and beat you? It's it's just crazy how I don't know now it makes it more insane the fact that it was bananas and Laurel who 
somehow avoided, you know, the guillotine here. But you look at the rest of that team, and it's just, unless Era 2 comes in last, I don't see them being thrown into elimination regardless. And I don't understand how. Yeah, well, I mean, they had... Realistically, other than Bananas, Laurel, and Kara, there's no reason to throw anybody else into elimination. It's a wash. Keep them there so they can't win. But Bananas and Laurel and Kara, like, you know, they should be targeted every single time. Right, and this is me, like, I- including Kara. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, if I was on Era 4, I would be expected to be targeted every single time. Yeah. That I was open. You know what I mean? Like, Jordan, I would expect to be targeted every single time that I'm open. And I, these people just aren't doing it. I don't... Jordan's one that I'll never understand. Because... Bananas, you know, as great as he is at the game, and we've given him fl- his flowers this episode, you can also go to the fact that, all right, like, he's good at the game, but he clearly doesn't have what he once did in finals. He hasn't won one in a while. He's lost his last few that he's been in, and he's on the decline. It's no shot at him. That's just age is a bitch. It'll get you. Yeah. But Jordan, I... I don't even understand how you forget about him. I don't understand how the rest of the house isn't just saying, hey, let's make sure that Era 3 doesn't win this challenge if there's any way it possible, you know, to collude. And let's get him in there. Because if we don't take three, four, five shots at him, he's going to win this game. Yeah, I just don't understand how everybody who might potentially go into elimination, right? Because that's the only way you can nominate somebody as a target. Why they don't all get on the same page to be like, hey, whoever wins, these have to be the targets. Yeah. No, you got to finish the plan. You got to finish the drill. Yeah. Like, that's great that, you know, Corey, you're taking one and you're stepping up to, you know, self-nominate. No, Jordan, you're the target. Yeah. You know, but at least on Era 3 side of things, like, they look at it as, like, we can win with him. And they can. You know what I mean? But... You know, every other team should be sitting there being like, no, it's got to be him. You know, it should be simple. Should be him, Bananas, Laurel, throwing Kara, Tori, every single time. Every single time, man. And the fact that like Era 4 being the newest era um, aren't taking these shots is just mind blowing to me. It's, It's mind blowing, man. It's hard to watch. It's hard to watch because like they theoretically could win any type of challenge. Mm hmm. Well, because at this point, like, Olivia and Theo, like, you guys are sitting ducks. You could be around for another few weeks, but at some (laughs) point, it's just going to be you (laughs) and the way that the numbers work out. And you're going to be the sacrificial lamb. They're going to put you in. You're on the same team together, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, It's crazy, man. I mean, that elimination, you know, was anybody's game, really. Like, it could, it could literally have been anybody's game. You go there, you see that elimination, it's anybody's game. You know, part of the nuance of throwing people down to the sand is seeing what the game is. If you see something that could be anybody's game, you got to take the shot. I completely agree. And I do want to give Brad credit. I, I've been a little harsh on Brad over his past few seasons. It's nothing against him. I have nothing but love for Brad. But yeah. the fact that, especially when we see Corey is, I don't know if you know this, but... Corey isn't good at pulling out and has three kids. Like, you know, he's, yeah. he's, that's who hey, he's playing you know, for. Hey, he carries those balloons like babies. He, you know, he, if there's chest one thing him for the babies, if there's, I'm surprised that they did as well as they could, because if there's one thing that Corey knows, it's popping rubbers. Like exactly. <laughs> or just not using them at all. Probably you know? more likely, but yeah. it's where I will give Brad credit is him saying like his motivation is we know he has two kids. It's, I want to do this for the legacy of the show. And I was like, all right, Brad, like the legacy of the show, dude, especially your error one, man. Like, come on, you know, like error one's only saving grace is them winning eliminations because they're not winning no dailies. Well, and it's something that I feel like, uh, Brad potentially had a shot at if he isn't just throwing it like a million miles an hour. Like he's Randy Johnson out there. Like a madman. Yeah. Like, everybody's sitting there being like, slow it down. And he's just like launching them. 
Not even listening. Launching. Launching. Uh, like, he must have went through, like, 75% of his balls just launching them. Oh, I'm sh- almost positive he threw way more balls than Corey. Just oh, because yeah. he's just like, I'm whipping them. Yeah. It, I, I don't know, man. It's it's just, I mean, listen. Everyone's in the dirt. There was a missed opportunity with Bananas and Laurel. Um, that is 100% going to bite people in the ass as the game goes on. And, you know, they have nobody to blame but themselves. They really do. Yeah, it's... Uh, here's the only thing that I'll give Era 1 is Rachel has a shot to redeem them all. Now, what, does she actually, because the rest, you know, if she does well or wins, they don't actually get credit for winning it. But, you know, it's the way the challenge works. So, like, Era 1 represent... And for she's sure. the only one who has a shot at it simply because I think even after going out and winning this elimination... People are still sleeping on her because of how much of a dumpster fire Era 1 is. Without a doubt. Sorry. You're Without thinking? a doubt. But it's like Era 1 is one female loss away from Rachel essentially being the target or Tina being the target every single time. Just by process of elimination. Like they're running out of options here. You know, like all these other teams are able to still kind of play the game of you know, some people can avoid it. Like, era one is at a point of not avoiding it at all. So, Rachel's most likely going to have to see a lot of eliminations uh, this season, as will Tina. I don't know if Tina's getting another hammer elimination, so she might be in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, she's not getting a hammer elimination, or at least the hammers will, or the nails will be hammered in, you know, a little bit harder. But, it, you know, it's, 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 I mean, it's not looking good. You know, I, like, they're... Regardless of like what happens, like you know, Derek is is gone, right? The the next time he hits an elimination, his knee's so fucked up, he's done. I don't care how much heart he has, um, you know. So you really have Darrell and Rachel <laughs> at this point. You have Darrell and exactly cue the scenes for next week where it's heights and it's just like, well, looks like we'll be seeing Darrell in elimination. One hundred percent. Like there's there's no way that they avoid it again. I would be shocked if Era One pulls out a win um, with a with a Heights uh, daily. No, th- there's no way. Yeah, it yeah, it's it it's crazy, man. I you know, I, I don't know how to put a put a bow on this you know recap, other than you know Era One being the dumpster fire that it is. Huge missed opportunity with freaking Laurel and Bananas like right on the table. Um, Air Force showing that they really don't know this game. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, you know, it, I think everybody, for as this being as many experienced people playing or supposedly experienced people playing, like, I, I would have never thought that I would see the day where the Vacation Alliance is kind of the ones pulling the strings on everything. Again. Every single thing. So one last thing that I do want to get into is I feel like we should touch a little bit on John A. And so first I want to talk about one of my favorite things. And that's simply clearly like Jordan, think he's the goat. I'm a huge fan. But one of the reasons why I love Jordan on the challenge is because he isn't always right. Sometimes he's a little bit loose. Yeah. And I think one of my favorite moments was uh, back in total madness and, Tori gets eliminated by Jenna and Jordan is losing his fucking mind on the sides. And you see little glimpses of that with the elimination with John A. And I just love it. It's not great for John A. It's not great for Air 3. But him just losing his mind up there. Phenomenal TV. He he likes to win. I mean, even in the daily, he's sitting there like screaming like, you know, you got to listen and everything. You know, so but... Like that's that's kind of the guy that you want on your team who's going to go nuts every elimination because he wants his team to win and be the strongest. He doesn't care. You know what I mean? Now, like for someone like John A, that probably doesn't help her because she definitely gets a little rattled if people are screaming. Like she's more of like the I hope everybody's silent so I can just do my thing. But you know, well, the writing was on the wall. The comedy of her saying. You know, oh, everyone's screaming, but I'm just locking it out. I was like, nah, two seconds earlier, like you were just screaming at Jordan. Clearly, yeah, I don't think you're nearly as locked no, in. No, you're as you're not locking it out. Like you could hear Jordan's. You know, Jordan's got like that dad voice where no matter how packed the crowd is, and you're the player on the field, 
you'll hear his voice. So where I want to, you know, I guess, end it with John A is I, I want to get your thoughts because, I, hell, we've never really talked about John A except maybe the recap when we were previewing Era 3, but she hasn't been a focal point of the season, you know, haven't seen a whole lot on her, so we haven't talked about her a lot, is I always felt like John A was someone who was underrated as a competitor. She had some big wins you know, early in her career, like she upset Sarah in a puzzle, even the hammer elimination where her and Zach lost to Jordan and Sarah, she did better than Sarah at their portion. It was just Jordan got him a lead. Yep. But she, you know, obviously never won. So I always thought she was a bit underrated. She comes back. She has a good showing in All Stars 1. She's the first female. Her and Kelly Ann Cross, I think, like right around at the same time. Guess obviously wins, but she was the first female to cross. She wins two or three, and I almost felt like she got pumped up too far and was overrated. And now she's back and I just don't, I love her, but I don't think she can win a flagship show. It's something like all stars, but where are you at with John a? Um, I'm not seeing it for the flagship. Like okay. all stars is her home. Um, you know, once again, she's another one that had a chance to make moves early on, but just stayed silent cause she didn't want to ruffle any feathers. And you know, on the flagship, you got to ruffle feathers. Like you can't, you can't sneak by, right? Because there's too many relationships going on there, you know? And she's one of the ones who called me afterwards and was like, oh man, you were so right about the vacation lives. I'm like, yeah, duh. I'm like, you, you thought you were going to be good? No. So like, I'm just, I'm tired of people being dumb and then being shocked when exactly what plays out plays out. Like, I'm sorry, but like, you know, you want to win the flagship, you got to make some moves. Like I've never won a flagship, so I can't talk. But at least in the first three seasons that I did, I made every single move possible to give me the best chance to win. There's some moves that I wish I could have did differently, um, you know, that I've spoken about of who I, you know, should have targeted at what points in the game. But you want to talk about strong players. I wasn't sitting there being like, yeah, you know, hold up. Let me not target them. Oh, there's a big alliance. Let me not break that up. It's crazy to me. Everybody has a voice. And you might as well die like screaming at the top of your lungs what you want than just kind of going out that way. You know what I mean? Like I'd much rather lose an elimination but call out every single thing that I'm seeing for people to wake up and realize it. Like, you know, it's like the rule of big brother. It's like if your game's up, blow up everybody else's game. It's what you want to see and it's just frustrating because we see a few confessionals every single week of talking about the Vacation Alliance and how they're pulling strings and where do I stand with them. And they're just waiting for, I don't know, that magical person who's going to take the shot because none of them are willing to do. And it's just like people, you had them in the house, you just didn't give them enough time to actually take the shot. Um. Well, you know, I will not. I will be. I will be coming in guns blazing. Vacation Alliance number one on the hit list. And unfortunately, you know, your counterpart Kara, unfortunately, doesn't have you there. But also, she's fighting for her life against her own team, so yeah. she has her and own she, issues. And, going and on. she also doesn't play that game. Kara plays survival. You know, how can I make it to the end? I play. How can I destroy everything in my path while making it to the end? Um, you know, and that's just two different nuances. You know, like she's she knows what the vacation lines is, but she's not going to target them because she's like, if I could just be unnoticed, I'll be fine. You know, but too many people are playing that game, and unfortunately, the other people playing that game do not have Kara's resume. Absolutely. And so, if we're looking ahead to next week, we're just going to assume that Tina and Darrell are going to be down in elimination because that's the safest bet. Obviously, there's uh, we don't know what the elimination is going to be, but if there's a matchup you want to see, so what, era two, it's Aviv and Nehemiah, three, it's Nia and Jordan, and then four, it's Kylan and Michelle. Who would you like to see era one go against? I mean, the, the smartest one would be Nia and Jordan. You know, yeah. that would be the matchup that we're, that we're trying to see here, uh, but... I think our four is going to be the ones that end up getting the bullet here. Like if they can't win, they're going in. Mm -hmm. And it's, and the thing is 
for Kylan and Michelle, it would be nobody's fault but their own because they allowed Josh and Jenny to essentially fuck over that Era 3 alliance that they created. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. That, I mean, that's what should be happen simply just because it's Nia and Jordan. You figure hopefully you can get at least one of them out of there. And plus, who wouldn't want to see the rematch of Jordan Durrell off of All-Stars 3? Like, Jordan obviously yeah. won that one, but Durrell did have him dead to rights, and Durrell probably beats almost anyone else in that elimination that's not Jordan. So he yeah. still has, as much as he's afraid of heights and he's lost some eliminations, I think Durrell still has, you know, that puncher's chance in any elimination he goes into. I mean, I think he needs it for win. his legacy. He can't take another hit. He doesn't need to win this, the show, but he needs an elimination win or two just to uh, remind people that he's still Durrell. He does. He does. But does he have it in him? I don't know. It's... I want to believe because I love Darrell, love his confessionals, and if I had a if I had a wager, you know, the betting man in me, if I had a wager one way, head says no, heart says yes. I don't know, man. It's not looking good for Era One. No, it's. And, and I think that the losing of the dailies does play into their performance on uh, the eliminations. It, it's really hard when your team is losing to have that kind of confidence going into an elimination. Because you're just not getting that momentum. Yeah. Say the unspeakable happened. Not unspeakable because it's actually far likely more than it's not. Darrell and Tina lose. They lose the daily. They end up both. One or both of them end up going home. How the hell do you keep continuing to have the era format with two or three people? I don't know I mean, how I, you're going to do it at four I, when I, there's I, I, I going to get eight. I think we know where it's going. I think eventually it's going into individual. Like we... We know this, which is why I don't understand why people aren't looking to just decimate the teams right now and get rid of all the good players while you can. Well, especially because it'd be so easy for... It's clearly going to be Era 3, but if Era 3 teamed up with 2 or 4, take their pick and just say, we don't need to worry about 1, obviously. Like, they're going to self-destruct and lose people on their own. Let's just go full force and try to get... We can era four or era two as much as possible. That way, when it comes to it, we have less competition. So if you're era three, you're looking at it. We want to take out the bananas, the laurels, and the cars of the world if they go era two. Or if they mm -hmm. want to side with era two and go after four, you're taking out, you know, I guess the Kylans, the Casey's, Josh's, Michelle's, people like that, Jenny. I don't know. I, my thing was Era 4 had an opportunity to be with Era 3. They just gave Era 3 the option to pick who they want to work with moving forward. So I, I think Era 4 made a very dumb decision. If they do hold their, you know, say they put in Bananas and Laurel, do you think that it's Era 3 and 4, there is no rift and they run the rest of the game? It, as, 100%. Especially as long as it's in this format. 100%. They run the game for as long as it's in this format. It would have been it, easy, easily, handily. You know what I mean? And Era 4 would have been the smarter decision because, you know, even if Era 2 wins, they're probably going to look at Era 3 and be like, we have options over there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So Josh screwed up. Tons of people's game. That sounds about right. Yeah, and he didn't even protect his own game. He's an idiot. Well, he's never protected his own game. He. Uh, yeah. It's just I don't know. It's yeah. It's ah, whatever, man. What that that team? I, I I love them. I want to see them do well. But I'm also sitting here watching, like, man, you guys are idiots. You just don't know how to play this game. I expect we'll only see more mistakes as the weeks keep coming. Unfortunately. Unf but unfortunately. I think that's going to wrap up our coverage of episode six. Polly, is there anything you have going on? Anything you need to plug? No, man. Just just chilling at this point. Just keep tuning in, guys. Like and subscribe. Show us some love, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, obviously, Polly and myself will be back with Alex next week covering episode seven. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit the bell, like, and subscribe. That way you get notified every time our podcast drops live, as well as if you're listening on Spotify, 
Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast app. Please rate and review. Give us five stars. I've been noticing that some of you guys have been doing it. If you keep doing it, I'll keep an eye on it. I'll shout out whatever I think is the funniest uh, review. So That's right. We'll take that. We'll take that kind of humor. So we love to see it. I mean, I think going back, uh, we were called, we, they were, we were given five stars, but just called, you know, if you want to see Kara stand, just complain about how she can do nothing wrong. This is the podcast for you. Yeah, this is it. This is it, guys. <laughs> this is it. You know? Uh, but that is going to do it for us. Until next Wednesday, we will see you then.